Before we get into today's show, I have some urgent news to share with you. Premier Insight's financial year ends on June 30th, and we're facing a $52,000 gap in funding that must be closed by that date. The great news is that generous friends of the ministry have offered to match the first $2,000 given to help jumpstart giving towards this goal. So please take a moment today to give your best gift at premierinsight.org forward slash Bible in a year. That's premierinsight.org forward slash Bible in a year. Thank you for understanding how important your gift is today and for giving generously. And now it's time for today's podcast. Poverty has a voice. It tells a child, you don't matter. You are nothing. Life will always be this way. It steals their hope. At Compassion, our mission is to release children from poverty in Jesus' name. And you can help. For a gift of £32 a month, you can play your part in helping to end poverty. When you're faced with a problem as big as poverty, begin with a child. Sponsor a child today. Visit CompassionUK.org. That's CompassionUK.org. Bringing the Word to Life. The Bible in a Year. First Chronicles chapter 6. The sons of Levi. Gershon, Kohath and Mirari. The sons of Kohath. Amram, Izar, Hebron and Uzziel. The sons of Amram. Aaron, Moses and Miriam. The sons of Aaron. Nabdab, Ibhu, Elisha and Ithamar. Elazar was the father of Phinehas. Phinehas the father of Ibshua. Ibshua, the father of Buki, Buki, the father of Uzai, Uzai, the father of Zariah, Zariah, the father of Merioth, Merioth, the father of Amariah, Amariah, the father of Ahitub, Ahitub, the father of Zadok, Zadok, the father of Ahmaz, Ahmaz, the father of Azariah, Azariah, the father of Jaanan, Jaanan, the father of Aziriah. It is he who served as a priest in the temple Solomon built in Jerusalem. Azariah, the father of Amariah, and Moriah the father of Ahitub, Ahitub the father of Zadok, Zadok the father of Shalom, Shalom the father of Hilkiah, Hilkiah the father of Azariah, Azariah the father of Siriah, and Siriah the father of Jazadak. Jazadak was deported when the Lord sent Judah and Jerusalem into exile by the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. The sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, Merari. These are the names of the sons of Gershon, Libni, Shammai, the sons of Kohath, Amram, Izar, Hebron, and Uzziel, the sons of Merari, Mali, and Mushi. These are the clans of the Levites listed according to their fathers, of Gershon, Libni, his son, Jahath, his son, Zimna, his son, Joah, his son, Ido, his son, Zerah, his son, and Jethurai, his son. The descendants of Kohath, Aminadab, his son, Kurai, his son, Asir, his son, Alkanah his son, Abisath his son, Asir his son, Tahath his son, Uriel his son, Uzziah his son, and Shaul his son, the descendants of Alkanah, Amasai, Ahimoth, Alkanah his son, Zophai his son, Nahath his son, Eliab his son, Jeraham his son, Alkanah his son, and Samuel his son, the sons of Samuel, Joel the firstborn, and Abijah the second son. Descendants of Merari, Mali, Libni his son, Shemai his son, Uza his son, Shemir his son, Haggai his son, and Asiah his son. These are the men David put in charge of the music in the house of the Lord after the ark came to rest there. They ministered with music before the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, until Solomon built the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. They performed their duties according to the regulations laid down for them. These are the men who served together with their sons. From the Kohathites, Heman, the musician, the son of Joel, the son of Samuel, the son of Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, the son of Eliel, the son of Toa, the son of Zuf, the son of Elkanah, the son of Mahath, the son of Amsai, the son of Elkanah, the son of Joel, the son of Azariah, the son of Zephaniah, the son of Tehath, the son of Asir, the son of Ebisath, the son of Korah, the son of Isar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. 
and Heman's associate, Asaph, who served at his right hand, Asaph, the son of Berechiah, the son of Shema, the son of Michael, the son of Bahasiah, the son of Malkijah, the son of Ethni, the son of Zerah, the son of Adiah, the son of Ethan, the son of Zimmah, the son of Shemai, the son of Jehath, the son of Gershon, the son of Levi, and from their associates, the Meritites, at his left hand, Ethan, son of Kishi, son of Abdi, the son of Malak, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Amaziah, the son of Hilkiah, the son of Amzi, the son of Bani, the son of Shema, the son of Mali, the son of Mushi, the son of Merari, the son of Levi. Their fellow Levites were assigned to all other duties in the tabernacle, the house of God, but Aaron and his descendants were the ones who presented offerings on the altar of burnt offering and on the altar of incense in connection with all that was done in the most holy place, making atonement for Israel in accordance with all that Moses, the servant of God, had commanded. These were the descendants of Aaron, Eleazar his son, Phinehas his son, Abshua his son, Buki his son, Uzzah his son, Meraath his son, Amariah his son, Ahitab his son, Zodak his son, and Ahmaz his son. These were the locations of their settlements allotted as their territory. They were assigned to the descendants of Aaron, who were from the Kohathite clan, because their first lot was for them. They were given Hebron in Judah with its surrounding pastulands, but the fields and villages around the city were given to Caleb, son of Jephunneh. So the descendants of Aaron were given Hebron, a city of refuge, and Libna, Jetir, Eshtimoa, Hillen, Debir, Ashen, Druta, and Beth Shemesh, together with their pastulands. And from the tribe of Benjamin they were given Gibeon, Geba, Elmeth, and Anathoth, together with their pastulands. The total number of towns distributed among the Kohathite clans came to 13. The rest of Kohath's descendants were allotted 10 towns from the clans of half the tribe of Manasseh. The descendants of Gershon, clan by clan, were allocated 13 towns from the tribes of Isashar, Asher, Naphtali, and from the part of the tribe Manasseh, that is, in Bashan. The descendants of Merai, clan by clan, were allotted 12 towns from the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Zebulun. So the Israelites gave the Levites these towns and their pasture lands. From the tribes of Judah, Simeon and Benjamin, they allotted the previously named towns. Some of the Kohathite clans were given as their territory towns from the tribe of Ephraim. In the hill country of Ephraim, they were given Sheshem, a city of refuge, and Gezer, Jokmim, Beth Horan, Ijalon and Gathrimon, together with their pasture lands. And from half the tribe of Manasseh, the Israelites gave Anna, Belim, together with their pasture lands, to the rest of the Kohathite clans. The Geshenites received the following. From the clan of the half-tribe of Manasseh, they received Golan in Bashan and also Ashtaroth, together with their pasture lands. From the tribe of Esashar, they received Kadesh, Dabarath, Ramoth and Annem, together with their pasture lands. From the tribe of Asher, they received Mashal, Abdon, Hukok and Heob, together with their pasture lands. From the tribe of Naphtali, they received Kadesh in Galilee, Hamon, Kirithiam, together with their pasture lands. The Meratites, the rest of the Levites, received the following. From the tribe of Zebulun, they received Jokneam, Carta, Rimono and Tabor, together with their pasture lands. From the tribe of Reuben, across the Jordan, east of Jericho, they received Bezir in the wilderness, Jassar, and Mephtarth, together with their pasture lands. And from the tribe of Gad, they received Ramoth in Gilead, Mahanayam, Heshbon, Jazer, together with their pasture lands. Luke chapter 8. After this, Jesus travelled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve were with him, and also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases. Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out, Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. The women were helping support them out of their own means. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. 
Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to others I speak in parables, so that, though seeing they may not see, though hearing they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear. And then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while but in the time of testing they fall away. The seed that fell among thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way they are choked by life's worries, riches and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. No one lights a lamp and hides it in a clay jar or puts it under a bed. Instead, they put it on a stand, so that those who come in can see the light. For there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed, and nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out in the open. Therefore consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they think they have, will be taken from them. Now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told him, Your mother and brothers are standing outside, wanting to see you. He replied, My mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. One day Jesus said to his disciples, Let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? he asked his disciples. In fear and amazement they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water and they obey him. They sailed to the region of the Gerasenes, which is across the lake from Galilee. When Jesus stepped ashore, he was met by a demon-possessed man from the town. For a long time, this man had not worn clothes or lived in a house, but had lived in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell at his feet, shouting at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. For Jesus had commanded the impure spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him, and though he was chained hand and foot and kept under guard, he had broken his chains and had been driven by the demon into solitary places. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, they replied, because many demons had gone into him. And they begged Jesus repeatedly not to order them to go into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs, and he gave them permission. When the demons came out of the man, they went into the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When those tending the pigs saw what had happened, they ran off and reported this in the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out sitting at Jesus' feet, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people how the demon-possessed man had been cured. Then all the people of the region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and left. The man from whom the demons had gone out begged to go with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over the town how much Jesus had done for him. Now when Jesus returned, a crowd welcomed him, for they were all expecting him. 
Then a man named Jairus, a synagogue leader, came and fell at Jesus' feet, pleading with him to come to his house, because his only daughter, a girl of about twelve, was dying. As Jesus was on his way, the crowds almost crushed him, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for twelve years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, and immediately her bleeding stopped. Who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, Someone touch me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could not go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. While Jesus was still speaking, someone came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, he said. Don't bother the teacher any more. Hearing this, Jesus said to Jairus, Don't be afraid, just believe, and she will be healed. When he arrived at the house of Jairus, he did not let anyone go in with him except Peter, John and James, and the child's father and mother. Meanwhile, all the people were wailing and mourning for her. Stop wailing, Jesus said. She is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him, knowing that she was dead. But he took her by the hand and said, My child, get up. Her spirit returned, and at once she stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were astonished, but he ordered them not to tell anyone what had happened. For more resources to help you bring the Word to life, go to premier.org.uk slash Bible. This reading has been taken from the NIV Bible Biblica and is published by Hodder and Stoughton. Together with our international mission partner, World Vision, you can make a difference. In the world's most dangerous places, children have been impacted by climate change, conflict, crisis. Children desperately need food. Be even next to make a difference today by donating £10 at childhoodrescue.co.uk.